Hey shiny happy people and welcome back to the channel. Today we are making a super awesome gift that you can do for your friends. It is a reversible wine bag. You'll see on the inside it's a different color. And this is uh, when you have friends who are moving to a new house or you have to go over to their house and you just don't know what to bring. They have a bit of everything and you want to bring a bottle of wine but you want to make it look a little nicer than just you picking the prettiest label you could find at the store. You're gonna bring them a bottle in a bag that you made. You could personalize this in some way. And the great part is because we've made a little adjustment to a standard wine bag, you can actually make this reversible, pull the tie through the other side, and uh, they can use it again as a different color. So let's get started. Let's go to the cutting table and see what we need for this super easy bag. All right, we're gonna need a couple things, folks. We're gonna need some type of grid, something to measure with. I love this grid that I can use with my rotary cutter. I am going to need a pair of scissors because if you don't want to use the rotary cutter, you could use scissors. You'll probably need some kind of a marking implement so you can draw on some things. You will need pins, of course, a sewing machine, an iron. Ooh, this is my, um, it's a sunbeam. I'm not quite sure. It was pretty cheap, actually. One of the cheaper ones at that gigantic box store that starts with a W. And then you're going to need a couple pieces of fabric. I just got these fat quarters. Uh, from the store and and sometimes they're in this sort of a, a bundle for like 97 cents And then sometimes they come rolled up like this Let me tell you what a fat quarter is because that get word gets thrown around a lot And if you've been making a lot of masks, but you haven't really been doing quilting or anything else You might not know what that is basically a, a piece of fabric is typically done 44 inch wide on a bolt so a bolt of fabric you'll see some over my shoulder back there bolts of fabric and so they have 44 inches wide, it's folded on the bolt, and then you get a, a yard of it cut off, right? And if you wanted a quarter of a yard of this, well, you would just, at the fabric store, they would cut you a quarter. Well, the problem is, is then you'd have a nine inch by 44 inch piece. And that's not terribly exciting, because this, unless you're making snakes for somebody, it's gonna be hard to do much with that. So the way they do a fat quarter is they will cut an entire 36 inch, one uh, yard piece, and then, they open it up and cut it a half, 18 inches, by just this half. So they cut it half this way and then half this way. They can get four quarters out of a yard of fabric and that makes them 18 by 22. And that's what we get when we take this fabric and open it up. They've cut this 18 by 22. So we're gonna open all of those up over here at the, over at my iron and uh, go ahead and iron them out. So I'm opening up these fabrics and I'm gonna give them a nice good press. I hope I have my, oh, I got the heat all the way up. I love it. And uh, they're usually got some folds in them because they've been folded up small to sell. You can actually buy packs of these, which I love because um, <laughs> I'm not always that good at figuring out which colors go together. And so they will coordinate packs for you. Um, and, and in fact, the, um, the bag that I made these were all coordinating batiks that were in the same package. So um, I know that at least somebody who sells fabric thinks those all went together in some way. And they may not be the exact same colors. Now here I had to pick several colors, but I, I picked first that um, fabric with the limes and the yellows here, because I'm gonna make this for, I'm gonna visit a friend of mine who loves lime green. And so um, I am going to, I wanted to get the green that sort of went with it and then maybe a yellow background for the stripe. So there's one piece and I'm gonna open these up and um, you'll see how that goes. Now I've had a lot of people tell me that they really like it when um, I do these videos in real time. So you, you kind of see how the, the process works. And so that's what I've been doing. I don't try, I try not to cut away too much because I want you to be able to see real time exactly what it takes to do these projects. In fact, I'm gonna start doing, I, I've already recorded some videos that um, don't have instruction, but they just vi they're just videos of me actually making these items start to finish. Um, so you can get an idea of how long it really takes because I do spend some time explaining things like what fat quarters are or you know um, why you wanna use steam and how you shouldn't sew over your pins even though I do it way too often. I will try in this video to not do that. You may have noticed that I have a really big ironing surface here and in fact, we do a lot of ironing here at my company, which is where I get to come on the weekends and record these videos. So um, because we had to do a lot of ironing, we in fact invested in this big ironing board extension that goes over our huge ironing board. And you may notice that uh, we've, we've got a couple fabrics that have bled on it. 
already, but that's okay because it's been cleaned, it's just stained. Um, the girls here at my workshop, and right now we have mostly, I think there's all, well, my dad doesn't work here um, at this office anymore, but he works for us. We have mostly women working in the sewing, although we do have myself and my dad that also do sewing. Um, the, but the girls here who get to use this all the time love it. They think it's magnificent. So now I have the three, and I'm gonna basically make the inside and the outside out of these two colors. Those will be the two colors, inside and outside. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay them on top of each other. Get it ironed together because we'll cut our, our shapes out of that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this 15 by 18. So we're gonna go 15 this way and 18 that way, which should basically be the amount of that. And that should leave us about seven inches left over on this side that we can use for something else. And then on the this gingham checkered section, I'm gonna cut out two uh, four inch by um, two pieces, sorry, three and a half inches by the full 18 here. Three and a half by 18. It's a really weird, funky sort of shape in there. I'm just trying to get rid of that. All right, let's go back over to the actual cutting board and get this started. All right, we have the two that have been nestled together. And I'm gonna uh, move some of this stuff out of the way. All right, we've brought our two that have been nestled together. And I'm gonna sort of find a straight line at the edge here. I need to trim off these little bits. So on my board, I'm gonna find, it's hard to see where we are. I'm gonna find a line where I can kind of start that. Make sure it's pretty much even along the bottom edge. And then I'm gonna chop this up the side. And because I have a, 24 inch ruler here grid. It's gonna be real easy. Now, let's say you didn't have this grid You could you definitely use your uh, Do them separately. Don't put the two together because I've laid them one on top of the other You could draw on it with your marker and then Cut it out with a pair of scissors. So I've I need my 18. I'm um, sorry. The 18 is gonna go that way. I need um, 18 by 15 so I need to measure 15 over now on my, you're gonna be different with what you're using. I know that I need to come to 41 on here, but I could also use this device, put the 18 inches down here at the edge, and I would know that it would bring it over, uh, sorry, 15 inches, the 15 inches there, and it would bring it over to what's 41 on this particular grid. So uh, you're gonna want 15 inches wide by 18 inches tall. I'm going to cut that up. Pull the fabric off, and now this fabric is ready to be ties on a different ones if I decided to make other ones like this, or I can use this for scraps. There's actually enough here for some masks. All up to what I want to do. And the last thing I want to do is straighten out each of these edges, because they're not exactly accurate, so I will now line the bottom edge up with a line, directly with a line, and then sort of go over each edge on each side there, and I'm just going to trim them up, just to be sure it's not really required, I mean, as long as they're close, because this is a pretty forgiving project. See, I just did so little that barely any came off of there. All right. And if you had to trim this up by a half an inch or something, it would not hurt anything at all, anything. Not at all. If it had to be 17 and a half, literally, the uh, average wine bottle is 12 to 12 and a half inches tall. We're gonna take about four inches off the bottom for the bottom space, and then we're gonna bring the, our, um, our tie will go in about, starting about four inches down. So not really a problem. Next thing I need to do is I need to mark on these fabrics. I need to mark down four and five inches. So what I'm gonna do is use my tool. I will place the four inch mark on the edge and put a little tick mark there. And then I'm gonna give myself an inch to come down, or I can put the five inch mark here and give myself another mark. Right, and then I just need to transfer that over to the other fabric. And I'm gonna do it this way. And you really want them opposites, and I'll show you why in a minute. I really didn't wanna draw on that fabric that way, but it's not gonna really be noticeable. I'm gonna stitch through that. All right, what we're doing here is we're putting in this space. We're putting in the hole there that our 
tie is going to go through. Now I need to sew these right sides together, and I'm just because this is a solid fabric, it is already right sides together. But if this had a print on it, you'd want to put it inside with the two right sides together. And I'm going to stitch along the top, leaving a space so that I can turn this inside out. And then I'm going to stitch uh, again down the other sides once I opened it. Let's go to the machine and I'll show you what that'll look like. So here at the sewing machine, I'm going to be using some contrasting thread just so you can really see it stitching, but you might want to pick something that matches. And I'm going to make sure these are lined up again. Now, if you're more comfortable, you could go in and pin this together along the top, and I'll just put a couple of pins in it to make sure it doesn't move anywhere. I like to put my pins in perpendicular to where I'm going to be sewing. In other words, they're going, they're going exactly perpendicular or across where my stitching is going to be. And I'll pull them out just as my needle gets to the top of each of those pins. Some people like to put them in a longer way, like this. They like to put them in this direction. My problem with this is if you do that, sometimes the fabrics can slide, and I don't want them to slide this way. I'm not as worried about them sliding back uh, side to side. It's just a personal preference. I'm going to use a little bit more than a quarter inch seam allowance. Not a full half seam allowance, but more like a three, uh, three eighths. I'm doing that because I don't want to have to come in later and uh, surge this or zigzag over it. Although you could if you felt like this was going to get a lot of wear and tear. I really feel like it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear because this is a wine bag. If you're making pillows or blankets or anything else, you may want to use a little bit wider seam allowance. Yes, so there we go. Now we've sewn all the way along the top and I made my first mistake, which is actually a good thing because you get to see some of the areas where I need to improve. What I did is I, I told you that I needed to leave a space in there to, uh, I needed to leave a space so that I could actually turn this inside out and I haven't done that. So let me get my seam ripper. My seam ripper has been hiding. And I'm going to take out a small section here in the middle. Uh, seam rippers are great because uh, they, al they allow you to fix a bunch of mistakes. Now, it's one of the things people do wrong. And they'll try to put it right into the seam and rip, rip, rip. What I really just want to do is get the, the, the point of it underneath, in between two of the stitches. Okay? I'm going to get it in between two of the stitches. Which is hard to do where I'm trying to not cover my hand when I'm doing that. In there, see, it's, there's a stitch connected in there, you can tell. And I just want to grab that, and then I'm not trying to cut every one of them because there's a blade in the middle of here. I'm just trying to pull out the end of that fabric. See how I'm pulling out the end of that thread right there? Because it's no longer tied as part of the rest of the group, and because I already pulled some off the other side, now it literally takes that out. And I can just keep picking it all the way down the other side. So I could pick this, I, mean, I could pick this for miles if I wanted to. I don't really want to do that. I want to do about three or four inches, you know, maybe, just so I have enough to be able to pull through. And that one I did a little long. What's going to happen is once we're done, this is the very, this is the edge where those two fabrics fold over one another and one goes inside as a line and the other one stays outside. And we're going to stitch along that anyway later. So, all right, I'm going to pull this thread out. And uh, when I get to do that top stitching, I am going to um, use a matching or coordinating thread. And so it will be very much not noticeable. And then we want to go to the other side and you'll notice that that, fat, that thread, the bobbin thread is still in there, but it pops up, see? And I'll just sort of cut it at the end and cut it at this end using the blade inside that. All right, so that gives us a space to turn it inside out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this open this way, and I'll, I'll take it over to the iron right now. Let's, let's take this to the iron and give it a quick iron first. So I'll carry it over here, and I want to iron in, iron that over just to get it flat. I'm kind of pulling on this fabric, giving it a little bit of a pull, and it'll help that fold later. We'll be real careful with that, that one too. We want that to fold beautifully. All right, that's going to be easier so that later when we go to, 
to fold it in half, it'll fold a little better. All right. Next, what we're going to do is fold this long ways, getting those two points to line up. And then we're going to stitch all down everything down here, everything except those two points where I have these marks. And you'll see them. I have the marks that I put in there earlier, and I don't need to sew down those. We're going to leave those open because we have to be able to put We've got to leave those open because we have to be able to put our our piece through when we get our our other part made. All right, so I'm going to go through here, and if I wanted to, I could, of course, pin down the side, down this, and I might want to do that because I might want to make sure this area down here is perfectly aligned. So I'm going to come down to that point and put a pin into it. I want to make sure it's perfectly aligned. All right, wow, that's gonna look really good. The only thing that might annoy me, and I don't know how to fix it, would be that these yellow stripes on this one might not line up with each other. But you know what? I can't fix that. So I'm not even going to worry about trying. And in fact, when we go to tie this up, I will show you the best way to tie it so that you don't even notice that there is a seam down one side. Won't that be great? All right, I'm going to bring this to my machine, my machine. Now, I could, if I wanted, use a guide that would go onto my machine, and I'll show you that. Um, my machine has these little holes that I can screw into, and I could screw this guide on that would allow me to just sew super easy as I come up to it. And sew all the way down. And I'm just butting the fabric up right to the guide. Now, it does mean you have to pull your pins out a little sooner. And as I said before, I need to stop at these marks. And I'm gonna backstitch at those marks. I skip the mark, I skip that point, and go over. Okay. And I wanna make sure this point is pretty accurate. And I'm gonna stop at these marks down here. But don't sew through that mark, because that's where the tie will get. Hit. And we're doing it putting that hole uh, on both sides because you'll be able to pull it through. So if you want to use the other side, you can just pull it through. Now, of course, if you just were doing something where you, you wanted the outside to be a specific look and the inside to be a specific look, you would just only do one of those sets of holes. So if the green were your outside, you would leave that one open. And it looks like it's closed here, but it's, it's really not. It's not closed um, because, I don't know where my little scissors went. I'll use some bigger scissors. It's not closed because um, that thread just kind of went over. We jumped right over it up to it without cutting any threads, really. Same thing down here. So let me trim those up real quick. Now we have to close the ends, the two ends. So I'm gonna bring it down here and I'm just going to sew right across the bottom. How good is that? And I'll go to the other side and do the same thing at the other end. And this is actually, Actually really close to being sort of finished with the major construction. The last thing I want to do is make sure that I open these up and sort of create um, corners so that the thing will stand up on its own. Like you'll notice, you'll notice here the way it sort of the bottle stands up in there and that's because we have we have these um, corners cut. Hmm, I don't know if you can see that real well. Can you see that those corners are cut there? Ooh, that looks so good. All right, so the way that we're going to do that is we are going to open up these corners. I kind of have to um, get the fabric to switch in here. Ooh, I'm kind of trying to grab one side of the fabric and I just trim my nails again. Um, when I was a teenager, I bit my nails really bad and I stopped doing that when I was about 17. And I've sort of grown nails ever since and I have to clip them every once in a while because I like having nails, but not super long nails because I'm not a supermodel. All right, so I've opened that up. You see how I've kind of created a point where these this seam and that seam are gonna go together. All right, and I can push one to one side. I'll push this one at the top here over and the other one this direction. So if one's going to your left, one's going to your right, then they'll kind of nestle into each other and I can find them. 
And then what I want to do is measure over two inches and draw a line on here. Now you might want to draw a line with some kind of um, like a chalk pencil or something so you're not leaving a big strong line on it. And that's really up to you. Um, I am going to do it with that because I like, um, I'm not worried about green on this obviously. So I'm going to use my trusty marker here and I'm going to put the line across my stitching line so I know it's straight and then I put the point at two inches and I'm going to just put a mark, ooh, don't move it, at the end here and at the end here and I'm going to stitch between those two. Okay, for that I'm going to take the guide off of my machine so I'm going to be able to stitch through. And just come in here and I'm going to trim that off later. I won't worry about it now. And then I'm going to come through and do the other one. Now the other one there isn't quite a line. So what I will do is I'll just finger press in sort of a seam so we know where that seam is. Finger pressing that in so that when I do open it up I'll have something to line up with the piece underneath. And I'm going to continue this laying over to the right and I'll just sort of feel my finger where that line is down through it. Okay, that's nice. So that's been done. And I'll lay it out kind of flat. All right. Now I'm using a rather industrial straight stitch machine, which is a great machine for the stuff that I do, but in fact, it's gonna make it a little harder to do what I'm doing. And I'll show you that in a minute because I'm getting to these very small areas. And, I, and normally on a regular machine, like a standard home machine, you'd be able to pull off a, a the throat here and be able to sort of hem pants and other things. It's not going to work so well for me, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to now use my scissors and just cut off close to a 3 16th or quarter of an inch seam there. That's really up to you. You can do um, whatever you want, or you can use your rotary cutter to do this. You could just put your marker on it. It's really not going to be that noticeable to anybody that it's in there. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And again, this fabric's kind of hard to, to pull apart. You know, I was, um, I was telling a, a friend of mine um, that I don't drink wine, and they were a little surprised by that. Um, I'm not, just because I know plenty of people that don't, don't drink alcohol. And it, it's not any, before anyone asks the question, you know, was there something that happened in my life or a religious issue? No, not at all. I just happen to prefer sugar. Like... <laughs> I just happen to prefer sugar, you know, like it just happens to be my thing. You know, a friend was asking me um, about, you know, did I want wine for a housewarming gift when I bought my house last year? And I, and I said, well, I don't drink wine, so it really wouldn't be helpful to me. And then, you know, whenever you tell people that you don't drink alcohol, they always get a little bit concerned, like, oh, gosh, oh, no, I don't want to bring up some terrible thing from Tim's life. And, and I have to say, um, you know, uh, kudos to everyone who has overcome something like um, alcohol addiction. I don't have that, that issue. It's not something I've dealt with. Um, and it's not, it's not like a religious thing or anything. I just, um, alcohol doesn't really do anything for me. Um, now, brownies and sugar, on the other hand, oh, my goodness, I am, I am, uh, I am as addicted as you can get to those kind of things. And those things I do have a problem with. So here's the cool part. Though, if you did have somebody that didn't really, isn't a wine drinker, it's okay because you don't have to make this just for wine. In fact, you could do this for a nice big bottle of olive oil. Can you imagine giving that to somebody as a, a housewarming gift? Um, or if they really like soda, you could put soda and put like, um, a, a, attach in some way, like some um, popcorn, a candy or something else to it. And uh, I'm actually going to show you how to make this a little more than just a glass of uh, a wine, a wine item. If you're going to give it to somebody as a gift and add a few more things to it, so don't think that this just has to be a gift of wine. You can housewarm this for somebody, and you could also, if you wanted, like you know, add embroidery to this. Um, if would they maybe put a monogram of their name on it or something, depending upon how good, um, how great of a machine you have, and how amazing the things that it can do, or what kind of great stuff you can do by hand. All right, so we're gonna come over back to the table here, and I'm gonna show you the next step here. The next step is we have to turn this thing inside out. Remember, we have this big long thing here. The ends are, are finished up 
like that, right? And we've got our holes for our, part, our strap to go through. And then we have the piece here that we had done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this entire thing and turn it inside out. Pull this one through. And as we're pulling this inside out, it's sort of like we're birthing this thing, you know? We're kind of pulling it. And you're gonna notice that it looks a little strange that it's this big, long, like we weren't making, we're not making a enormous serpentine bottle of wine. I mean, why is this thing so long? And that's because we're gonna turn one part inside out. So now that we've got that, we're gonna figure out which side we wanna shove in through the other. And so I just go to the top here and open it up and I'm just gonna put my hand, I'm gonna scrunch this part up and basically push it down through the middle. So I will find the other end with it. If I can do that. Hmm. I guess I should push it in this way. Kind of, there we go. I've shoved it all in there. And now I've shoved it all in, you see it's kind of, and I'm gonna push my hand in to get that lined up. Now what I want to do is make sure that my seam line, which is right here, matches for the two of them. So I'm feeling my hand inside of here and I can find where that seam line is and where these four corners are, these little pointers at the bottom. So we have that now. And you'll see that we've got the part that we folded over earlier is right here. And I want to exactly fold this in half. So I'm doing that right now. And this is where I need to get a matching thread so I can come in and appropriately, there we go, line this up and put a stitch right around the top. I'm gonna to put it less than 3 eighths because remember we used a 3 eighths inch seam allowance. If I put it less than 3 eighths, then it will pick all this up. See right here? And that's where we had ironed it before. If I wanted, I could come back and through here, tuck all these parts in and give it a little bit of a steam again, just to get it ready. All right, let me put a matching thread on my machine and then we will go there and stitch that top together. So I've threaded my machine with yellow because it'll look really good with this fabric and it'll be a nice contrast to the green, but it's also gonna look really good on our strip fabric that we're gonna use. And uh, then I'm going to put in my bobbin now. So I've got the bobbin and uh, I've gone ahead and put yellow thread into my machine. I wound the bobbin. Now, I don't know when I'm gonna use ne yellow next time. So I didn't completely wind the bobbin. I did part of it. Uh, I'm using Guterman thread. It's a German thread. Um, we really like it. In fact, in our workshop, we found that it breaks probably a quarter of the time as it used to when we were using a different brand whose name I won't mention. And uh, this is more expensive. Yes, absolutely more expensive, but also, I have to tell you, sometimes worth it because you have to look at your downtime and other stuff. So I want to stitch around the top of this, but I want to actually go on the inside where I can see it. So, in fact, um, I want to make sure that you see this. I'm going to fold back the top, and then I'm going to stitch around through the inside. I'm going to go just inside the presser foot. So, in fact, I actually have, it's hard to see there, and I'll show you this on my presser foot. There is... I'm gonna go on the inside edge, really right to there. I'm literally gonna barely connect it, like almost an eighth of an inch when I sew it. And, uh, and I'm a big, a big fan of that actually, because um, it's sort of an edge stitch. And as long as I keep it the same all the way around, it's gonna look really professional. I mean, it, it looks really good. Now I'm gonna tuck in a couple of these black threads that were the interior thread that made up this thing because I don't really wanna see them on the outside. So I'm using my seam ripper just to tuck them in. And I'll do the same here down at the other end. There's a couple that are just trying to get away. They need to go, go inside. Leave us alone, go inside. Now we're getting to the part Remember that I told you it would be nicer if I had one a standard machine like at home? Because what I need to do is I need to find that mark where the hole was. See that hole that I can put my finger in? And I need to stitch all the way around it through the both the two layers and the other to create a channel for our fabric to go through. Unfortunately, 
I can't really put this thing all around and I'm gonna have to really pull back, which I can do with my machine, I'm not worried about it. But for yours, if you can take off that part of it and create a place for you to do like a hem stitch, do it, you'll be much happier. The way I'm gonna figure out how to do this evenly, I'm gonna put my machine and literally find the edge of where that is, put my needle, my, my presser foot down, and then I'm gonna take something, I could draw right on my thing or if I, but I'm gonna take a piece of uh, a post-it note and put it down. And what that does is it gives me the exact level where I need to run next to, okay? Then I'm gonna go and while I have the time, I'm gonna go through and find the other side where I want it to end on the other side. And now I know how far on the post-it note and I'll use a marker, be careful not to touch the, and I'm gonna draw a line all the way down the post-it note where I want to do the other stitch. The last thing I need to do is I need to make sure that I can put my stuff through both sides. And right now, both all the fabrics are going in the same direction. So I need to put my finger in and push back, almost open up this fabric, the top fabric and go back with it, right? And I need to do the same with the other. Let's go over the iron and I'll show you how that's gonna work. So I'm gonna go here and find this point and then I'm going to separate from the back I don't really want, I don't want to be touching them both at the same time. So I've separated it from that back green fabric. And then I'm going to kind of flip it the other direction. This sounds so weird. I know it's going to look really weird, but let's go with it. I'm going to take a pin. Okay. I know where that hole is. See, because I can put my pin through it. And I'm just going to pin that fabric to itself. Just the one side. Does this make sense? This side is no longer attached. See how these two sides are separate? Two sides are separate. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Ooh. I'm gonna put a pin through it. You don't have to go this intense with it. You could just worry about people putting their fingers through, but I really wanna make sure that's a hole that's open later on. Okay, so that's now been done. There's a pin through there, there's a pin through there, which gives us an open spot. We can now see in through there. See that? And I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside. So I'll pull it open a little bit. The one is already naturally done that way. So I'll put my finger in and make sure, and I'll put a pin right in it. That's separated, see? And then I'll go shove the other one, just make it an opening, put a pin through it. Again, I'm being overly dramatic with this, but you know, it's what I wanna do because I wanna make sure this is gonna work. So then I'm gonna go in and I'm going to find a way to, well, I gotta kinda take this back out, but iron it flat that way. Use my iron. And again, this is just me being a little more concerned. You don't have to do it quite this much. And you could leave the pins in there. Do the same thing on the other end. Just get those to iron in. All right, now I can put it back together. And I've got that stitch at the top to make sure I get it back in the right direction. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna, oh, I just dropped the pin that way. I'm gonna shove that back through there. All right, now I've got all of that the where I need it to be. Let's get back over to our sewing machine. So now I'm ready to actually sew this through with the yellow I'm going to sew on the inside. Remember, I'm going to make sure that this edge lines up with my, with my part on the other side. And I'm going to take it real slow. And I'm going to go from the stitching, where the pins are. So I want to make sure I don't run those over too hard. Everything's lined up. Can I see through the entire hole? I can. See, look, I can put my finger through that entire hole there. Oh, it's perfect. All right. Get that lined right up properly. I'm going to make sure it lines up on the edge here, put it in, a couple back stitches, and now I can sort of straighten out two or three inches and come in here and make sure the edge over here is lining up. Let me see what I'm doing there. I'm making sure that over there,
making sure that over there, that edge is lining up and that everything's staying flat. And I'm only doing a couple of inches at a time. I'm literally holding it flat with all my fingers. And again, if I wasn't using this industrial machine, you would be able to pull off the, I would be able to pull off the edge of a machine and do it a little easier. And if you try to take too big of a bite, it's not gonna work. So you can't try to do half of the thing at one time. I gotta take my time to get it. But I'm almost done with that one. The next one's gonna be even harder though because the next one, of course, is uh, an inch further down. All right, let's take that pin out of there. I can take the pin out of the back now. And I've got to shove that further in. And I think I can actually give you a different view from over here. Ooh, that's weird. Hmm, I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Give you a view from this direction as you watch it go through. I will line up my stitching right on this edge. A little bit of a back stitch. And even here I've gotta even take less, I've gotta take less bites, even smaller bites. But it's okay, because this is gonna look good. I like the yellow with the green too. I actually really like this stitch color of the, the thread I'm using. It's a nice, it's a nice connection. And my friend who I'm making this for is very, he's very color conscious. He's one of those people who's super color conscious. So he will know if it goes together. All right, you might be, it's gonna be hard to see. Maybe you'll see it better in the green. Let me turn it inside out here. Like when you hear, you'll see the stitching around there goes and there's now a hole through the center that I can pull my part through. All right, let me trim up a couple things here and we'll go to the next step. The next step of course is taking our other fat quarter and cutting two pieces that are gonna be 18 by three and a half. And uh, we're gonna make use those to make our strips. Let's get going on that. So I'm gonna use my grid and I'm gonna try to square this up because there are lines on this fabric. And in fact, it would make sense to use the lines that are already on the fabric. So I will straighten that up right along that edge. Got close enough. And I'm gonna cut these, I said th three and a half by 18. I'm just gonna use the length. The length is pretty much 18, so that should be three and a half by 18. And again, I have a rotary cutter that appears to have a flat tire. We do a lot of cutting here, so mm, that happens. All right, three and a half inches by that 18, I'll probably run this cutter through twice on this piece of fabric. Oh, that worked better. All right, back over to the machine. So now I'm gonna take these two pieces of fabric, I'm gonna put them right sides together and sew along the short distance down here. And then I'll sew, I'll open it up, fold it in half and sew. I'll show you what I mean as I get to the machine. And again here, if you wanted, you could use pins or you can use your guide to stitch this together. And now that I've got that entire, that piece done, I'm gonna come down and fold this right sides together. Just finger press, just finger press that a little bit. We will fold it right sides together and I'm gonna actually leave a section here so I can turn it right at the middle. Here's the reason I do it, I'm kind of lazy. If I turn it at the middle, that'll always be inside of the, the bag, and I won't ever have to stitch it shut. So here's what I'm gonna do. I use the same 3 8 inch seam allowance. Uh, you'll notice I started at the middle, because I'm gonna go all the way down to the end. Then I'm gonna turn the corner. And I'll come back to the other end. And uh, I'll, I'll start again, I'll flip the whole thing over, but now instead of going right at where I started stitching, I'll go down about an inch or two, maybe three, and start sewing again. Always back stitch that, because I'm gonna have to turn it through there, and that's a little more work. 
Now you may have seen in a, another video that I've done uh, where I show you how to put a ribbon through here and turn these long pieces, but really these aren't that difficult to do, so I'm not gonna worry about it on this. What you need is a pen or some kind of uh, something to turn these through, and you're basically gonna open up this fabric and just, um, well, if I can get the two sides of the fabric separated, and just shove it back in on itself, right? So what I find the easiest thing to do is like take a pen, take a pen, or any other long piece that is not sharp. You can't use something that has a sharp edge. I put it in there and I just start uh, bringing the fabric down. Not that I'm not trying to grab the fabric that's inside now. I'm trying to grab the fabric on the outside, and I'm going to kind of gather it up in this hand. See how this goes? So I'm kind of gathering it on each side. I'm not trying to shove the pen all the way in though. Just be aware of that. I'm not really trying to do that. I'm gonna go through here and I get to that opening and then I just sort of bring it out. Now I might use, if this was meant to be real, I might use that, I might use a turner or something else, but here I literally can just open it the rest of the way out. So that's been open and I'm just gonna start on the other end and do the same thing. So I'll just try to get the fabric separated. See how it sort of separates and creates a little, if I grab the two sides, it separates and creates a little space to put your pen which is great. And again, the pen is closed. It's not an open pen. We're not trying to get a point because you will go right through the fabric and then you'll wonder why in the world it did that. The pen in there to get it kind of focused. You're just grabbing the outside fabric because this is wrong side out, remember, and just bringing it down. Ooh, look at that. It's just working its way. And then Again, make sure you're not putting the whole pen in there. You don't want to lose the end of it. Also, because I don't really want the cap to come off and then it mark the whole thing up. I mean, that would be pretty rough. All right, then you'll see it starts to come out the other, that end. And I'll just use the end of the pen to kind of point that. And then again, just, whoo. And now it's all enclosed. Let's go to the iron and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. Here at the iron, I'm just gonna iron this thing flat. I sort of roll it to get the edges, you know, pushed out. Now, if you wanted, this is something that you could put a little stabilizer in, that's an iron-in stabilizer, and that it would make it a little more um, stiff, so it held more of its shape as a bow. I kind of like that sort of floppy, it sounds weird to say, but I like that sort of floppy look, you know, that it's sort of just a nice big leisurely bow. And you'll notice that down here, if you really want, you could come back along and stitch the edge of this, but that hole that we went through is now right about here. But that's going to be inside the bag. When we put it into the bag, it's going to be pulled all the way in. And I'm never, I'm never actually going to see it because these ends will come out here. So it doesn't matter as much to me to do that. All right, a couple of ways that you can pull this through that opening. One of them is that you could get a... You could get a um, bobby pin, not a bobby pin. Yeah, a bobby pin would work. Perfectly fine, you could use a bobby pin. Or you could use a, a safety pin and, and hook a safety pin on it and put it through. So that's certainly one option. And in fact, I'll probably do that. So let me go find a safety pin. Aha, I found a safety pin. See, here we go. And I'm just gonna put it on one end of this. So I'll put a safety pin on one end they also make things specifically designed to go through these parts. In fact, I kind of want to make sure that there's not a problem, so I'm going to fold it over in half to make that a lot smaller so it doesn't catch on anything. All right, and I'm going to feed it between the two fabrics. Remember, we have two fabrics in there, so I don't want to just go out the other side because it'll just come out of the... It'll just go to the inside, like here. You'll see it just goes to the inside. So we actually have to make sure it goes into the other fabric. So we're gonna push in between the two fabrics. Oh, fantastic, if it's working. And then we'll work our way around. And I'm just gonna sort of turn it this way and just be sort of like we did when we turned the, um, the long piece of fabric. We're just doing the same kind of thing. We're working our way up. And this will take, it'll feel like it takes a while, but it actually, it works pretty fast. 
there are, like I said, there are specific things you can buy. And if you're going to do a lot of these, I mean, I would buy the long plastic thing that lets you sort of thread it on the end. Or if you're going to make like a lot of shorts and you'd have to like, you'd have to, um, you have to do a casing like this and put elastic and other stuff or, or uh, straps through. Yeah, I would definitely be like, yeah, you should, you should buy the device. But I didn't buy the device because I don't do this that often. So there we are. And I'm more than halfway through now. So I'm just going to keep going with that. I'm pushing it through. And every once in a while you can stop and sort of pull the the, the fabric to get it through because I still have all this that, that most, some of it's going to come through. And I'm getting really close to the end actually. I, would, I didn't think I was that close to the end. So I get, as I get closer and closer, I'm continuing to scrunch it up on there and I'm right here at the end. So there we go. Our thing is coming out. I'm going to pull that out through. And I'm going to find the other end that I want and keep pulling until I get the two ends where I want them to be. So I'll hold the two ends here and then straighten that out. So you'll see that I still have quite a bit of it tied here, but I'm going to pull the two ends and um, get this, the rest of the fabric around so that I get the, the middle of this, you know, pulled together. So I'm still pulling out. If I grab you just have to work it. It's one of those things where, especially if you put your hand on the inside and you can kind of work the fabric out and sort of pushing with my hand. Ah, oh, look at that. So now I've got all of that handled on the inside. Look at that, isn't that cute? It's pretty even. And now, believe it or not, our bag is actually done. Let me show you how you might use this. All right, what we're gonna do is uh, I've got a nice bottle of Prosecco here and I'm gonna put that inside. So of course, if we did that, if we put that inside, Oh, isn't that cute? And then we can tie it up. That would look cute. And that's really cute all by itself, right? You've got a nice bottle. Isn't that cute? Well, it's, it's done. You've got the, the stuff in the inside there. Looks so cute. But I actually think it would be nice if we added something to it. So in fact, I'm gonna turn it inside out because I think the lime is really cute on the other side. All right, so I turn that inside out. And remember when I turn it inside out, now my ties are on the inside, but because of the way we designed this, I can just pull them to the other side. I literally just reach in there and pull them out to the other side. How nice is that? I may have to shove it through with my fingers. See, I might have to go in here and, and really pull it, but that works. So now I've got my ties on the other side once it comes out, aha. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this with the bottle of bubbly. Let's put that in there. And I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna go, go ahead and tighten it up. Right, now that's been tightened. I'm gonna turn it around to the other side so I don't see the seam line. And I'm gonna add a couple things. I'm gonna add a couple of wine glasses, right? So I go connect through those. And then I'm gonna add a I just went to the dollar store and bought dollar store wine glasses and a dollar store cork screw. Tie that, give it a little bit of a knot, right? A little bit of a, a, a bow here. And give that a zhuzh if you wanted to, make it a little cuter. And then look what I've done for my friends. I've made them a lovely, welcome to your house, let's get the party started type of wine gift that has not only two wine glasses, but also a bottle opener, uh, a corkscrew, and a really great bottle of wine on the inside. All right, I hope you enjoyed doing this. Play with it. Watch the video where I make one start to finish so you'll see just how fast it can possibly be. Uh, I've been Tim Totten. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And until we uh, meet again, stay crafty. Bye for now.